Right, well, my talk fits quite closely with uh, what's just been said, but it's going back a stage, you know, before we actually get to the field work and so forth. <coughs> Obviously, as a consultant, like the other consultants in this room, we are heavy users of geophysics. Um, we don't use it on every single site, but, you know, it's, it's frequently needed at some point. Um, and what I want to do is, you know, these are the questions that were posed by the session organisers, which I'm not going to talk through now, but I'm just putting those up to remind you what, what they were. And I'll come back to those, because what I'm going to do, I'm doing a bit, bit of a whistle-stop tour through a number of case studies, um, some of which um, have gone th right through to excavation and so forth, many others are still in planning at the moment. And then I'll come back and start giving you some very, very basic answers back to that, which in, in terms of how I see some of these things. So, for us as a consultant, you know, why do we need your work? Well, we have to go from, you know, we get an email from a client with a big site like this, red line saying, Rob, we're looking at putting 1,500 uh, units, 20 hectares of, of employment, God knows how much open space and so forth. We've got flooding issues, we've got ec ec ecology and so forth. And we have to go from that red line where we may know absolutely nothing at all about the site unless we have personally worked on the site next door or whatever. Then we need to go through, so on the right-hand side, a consented outline planning permission. That might take years to get there. And then ultimately, through to actually getting houses out of the ground with a bit of excavation in between often. So that's why we need geophysics. We need, at a really early stage or fairly early stage, to start getting some certainty over just the HER, which can be very good, but often we, we need to start knowing the absolute detail without, at a very early stage, spending too much money. Um, so I'm going to go through a few case studies. This is a large site uh, just outside of Swindon. Uh, that's the Honda factory on the left-hand side, if you know Swindon. The proposed, that's now a consented scheme on the right. I can't remember the houses is, it's about two and a half thousand houses. It's a project that I've personally been worked, working on for, I think it's about 15 years. And originally, this was only a small part of an absolutely massive site, which then got brought forward uh, as the consortium we were working for broke up during the recession, and uh, so bits have brought, been brought forward by different clients. So we ended up doing a geophysical survey of the whole of the site in different uh, goes. Uh, this, this part of the site was probably surveyed at least 12 years ago, and then the rest of it was surveyed about four years ago, because the scheme died during the recession. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty spectacular results. Um, it heavily guided us in terms of how we were going to do the work, how the scheme was going to be devised, and the trenching plan. And the reason why it was really key for us, this whole, this whole land is a commercial turf crop, which was a nightmare to even do the geophysical survey in. But when it came to trenching, because of the cropping of, uh, of commercial turf, getting any trenches in there was extremely hard. So we had to work very closely with the council, Wilshire Council, to work out a trenching that is by no means ideal. <coughs> it's very, very low sample, but we needed to know the answers. So here, what we've actually found is this interpretation is almost spot on. Where we found archaeology, digging, this, this where the geophysics is, is, we found the features almost precisely where the geophysics uh, were, were showing them. So here, this really worked well for us. It still did cost a lot of money, but it helped us and the council get to a point of getting through this really hard and complicated site because of the land conditions. Nothing to do with the archaeology, nothing to do with planning. Um, and then a more recent one, um, where you can still see the outline scheme on the, on the left-hand side. This is, uh, this is the, the unprocessed, the un uninterpreted data, and you can see we've got some pretty nice stuff. Uh, and I'm not really going to talk about the detail of it, but the key thing for us on, on this site is a magnitude service who did the work for us not only did their interpretation, but they've actually started trying to look at what the archaeology actually is and starting phasing it. So, for example, we have their thinking, which I agree with. These are probably Bronze Age. There's also Roman and the various other bits and bobs. Now, we've not trenched it. So we've no idea if, uh, if Finn and his team are correct or not, but that gives us something really good to work for. And again, there was political reasons why trenching was just not going to happen, even though it should have done. Um, and there's a lot of pressure put, put on the, the council's archaeologist to not do any trenching, but it meant that we've got enough certainty that we know what we're dealing with. The client also knows that they've got a 
they're going to have a very, very large bill in the, in, in the not too distant future. And this is another one which I'm saying, is this a successful case? Yeah, on, on paper, it looks great. The, the, there was crop marks that look almost, almost exactly the same as this. You can see the interpretation on the right-hand side. It, it looks pretty convincing to me. Uh, when we came to Trent, and this was a key part of the development because the main access was coming in about where it says Area 1 the, over there. So we have a potentially major issue to deal with. But when the trenching that was done, you can see the black lines is where they actually found features. We actually understood less when we started digging it because the features ended up being that, that deep. Many of them weren't actually there. Many of them were very different from what they appeared to be. There was very little cultural material. And you know, although it's, it's, it's worked in many ways, the geophysics has almost given us false um, positive. There is archaeology, but it certainly doesn't look like that. Um, and this is the same site as we started off with. Now, this, this is one where some of the discussions were earlier I found quite interesting because we did a full scale evaluate, a full scale um, survey of all the development area. And this is an area where the local authorities' archaeologist had said, Yeah, geophysics just doesn't work here. And I have to say, I poo pooed him. Um, so we did, the ge we did the geophysical survey anyway, and on paper, or on the screen, that looks like it worked. And we've got some archaeology here, we've got little bits of archaeology here, but what I haven't told you is that is a scheduled deserted medieval village. <coughs> which is, if that's the edge of the schedule in here, and this field, you can see there's bits and bobs here. When we, when we trenched that, we ended up with extremely well preserved stone buildings, surfaces, which were about that far below the surface. Uh, and in the rest of the site, where you've got the blue rectangular lines, we didn't find that, but we did find a prehistoric settlement. And then this field, in here, we found quite a large, uh, quite a large Roman settlement as well. So in this case, we ended up, the geophysics kind of worked, but actually the reality was that the local authorities archaeologist, I hate to say, was correct and I was wrong. I mean, we, we still had to do this, but here, this sort for me, and also the local authority archaeologist is, you know, how do we actually use this information? How reliable is this without digging a hole in terms of informing me and my client about the layout of the scheme, which bits need to be preserved, which bits don't? Because when we trenched this, we had to have the master plan had to be significantly redrawn for the archaeological reason. We had to get rid of an, uh, an access road, we had to take out a load of housing and all sorts of stuff. And then the final case study is one that's ongoing. Um, Headland Archaeology did this uh, for us. And the interpretation you know, basically shows to me there's bugger all there. Uh, there's some land drains, but there's no significant looking anomalies in the grayscales or the interpretation. Now here, we're still in discussions with the county council about do we trench, when do we trench. But it would be great from my perspective, if we have a site like this, to be able to have enough certainty that on one level, I'd like to say to the council, actually, do we need to bother doing anything else archaeologically to this? You know, do we even need to trench it? You know, if that really is black, and I'm not saying we wouldn't, but it would be good to get to the point where we could have real certainty, as much certainty as we can, to, to help inform not just the archaeology, but the, the whole strategy going through the planning system. So I come back to these questions, and they're fairly sort of high-level answers. And um, other people have talked about this already this afternoon. Um, are we up to date? Well, yes and no. I think I'm up to date, but like the last speaker, I'm not a geophysicist. How, how am I to know if I'm actually up to date? I see a lot of geophysical survey reports, some, some better than others, um, but I'm not an expert. Um, the second one, you know, as I hope some of those case studies at least gave a hint out, we need as much certainty, and so do the local authority archaeologists, to help us come to agreement about how do we, how do we uh, deal with evaluation trenching? How do we deal with the layout of the scheme? Um, so that's what, we, that's what I really need. And this is where some of the comments people have said about maybe there should be uh, geophysical consultants. I, for one, would really like something like that. And you know, with some of the work companies we work with, we try to work a little bit more rather than me just picking up the phone and say, 
give us give us a price for geophysical survey for 100 hectares and actually try and actually think about what are we actually really doing and, and why are we doing it? Are we getting what we want? I mean, on one level, you could say we are. We're getting a report with lots of figures and lots of data. But is actually what we're getting in terms of quality and results. Most of the time, I think I personally am getting good quality work back from you guys. I tend to go to the same group of companies because you know, I've learned to you know, I understand what they're like and what kind of stuff they produce. But are we getting it? I don't think I'm the right person necessarily to say because I'm not a geophysicist. I can't look at the sorts of stuff that John was talking about and, and interpret the data because I'm not a geophysicist. Could we, get, um, could we get more? Well, I think we can always get more. Do we, do, do me as a consultant, do I know what more actually is? I think a lot of the time I don't, to be frankly honest. I'm not the expert, so again, it would be good to hear from you guys what more could be done. You know, there was a discussion about GPR this morning and doing it at the same time as uh, magnetometry. Well, yeah, that would be great to see more of from my, myself. Um, can we recognise a good or bad geophysical survey? Well, again, I think I can, but I'm not a geophysicist. So I might look at a plot and think, I think they've missed that, or why have they said that? But you know, I'm not an expert, so I think... I, I think I think we need more education. So many people like me, me, me needs more education and, and you know, curators and field archaeologists and so forth uh, to be able to recognise that so we're able to work together to get to overcome some of the issues that some of you have raised already. And then finally, really, I've, I've already really said it, you know, what can you guys do more? Well, you need to educate us more so you know, we can understand what you're producing for us so we know that we can have more certainty, or when we need to question, like the one that fa I think failed in, in, in Bicester. You know, I should have been able to sit there and say, you know, what is this data really actually showing me? Do I really understand what it is? Um, so it, it, it's more interaction between us, and you, know, you guys need to educate us, and that's it.